everybody, back here, Pauline here, and welcome to episode 98 of In Focus Friday. Now, last week we did a double header episode and we looked at the Bull and Bear round as well as the one ounce prospect to Golden Gems bars, both of which have been waiting for nearly two months to get their moment in the spotlight, and they finally did. So if you haven't checked them out yet, well worth a look. The link, as always, is down in the description below. Now, as you can see, the winner from last week's vote was the Dragon and Tiger one ounce coin from the Perth Mint. Absolutely stonking coin. It's going to be a good old episode today. Thank you for voting if you did. The Spade Guinea, which incidentally I actually think is equally as beautiful in its own right as the Dragon and Tiger, will be featured next week in episode 99. So there's no vote today. However, I will be giving you some subtle and less than subtle hints as to what we will be featuring in episode 100. That's one of the less than subtle hints. Uh, at the end of this episode, so make sure you stick around and do comment what you think that giant bang represents for episode 100. Anyway, let's get on with episode 98. We're not quite at 100 yet. So episode 98 is the Dragon and Tiger, which I can appreciate why it won the vote over the Spade Guinea. This is an absolutely stonkingly good coin. Look at that. So uh, this is the second in the kind of I don't really know what the series is called. I guess you could call it the Dragon and series because the first one was a Dragon and Phoenix chasing the flaming pearl of wisdom in the center of the coin there. This time they have substituted out the Phoenix and they've put in this rather menacing, angry looking tiger. Uh, so I guess you could call it the Dragon and series. I, I don't really know exactly what it's called. It's just a very nice oriental themed series of coins that the Perth Mint are coming out with. They do seem to be um, doing a lot of these oriental style coins. There's obviously a huge market for it in the oriental market itself, but also within the western market there's a, obviously a huge allure to these types of coins and designs uh, that are apparent from western markets. So, and it's definitely proved incredibly popular because these, when we pick them up via the group order I arranged last month, were one of the most popular items ordered. Huge numbers of people uh, flocking in to purchase one, two, or even 20 of these coins. So really, really good stuff from the Perth Mint as always. And quality is just sublime. This is absolutely amazing. I've taken the lid of the capsule off, as you can see, so that we can get a full appreciation of what this coin looks like on this side. It's absolutely outstanding. I just think the level of um, care and precision that goes into this is fantastic. Just from the design alone, you've got to look at the you know, the intricacies of the dragon all over the dragon is very, very good indeed. And one thing that I've been reading is that uh, some of the criticism from the first coin uh, was that the dragon wasn't menacing enough. And they have at least done a bit of a better job, so I understand, of making that dragon a little more, little, little more menacing, which I guess is important because, boy oh boy, does this tiger look pretty ferocious. Now, the same theme is carrying forward from the first coin, which is about this flaming pearl in the middle, flaming pearl of wisdom. So both of these animals are competing and fighting for it. Of course, dragons and phoenixes were uh, and are very prominent animals and mythological creatures in Chinese culture. The dragon and tiger, the tiger especially, is a symbol of strength and power uh, and dominance, and that is fighting that dragon for that pearl of wisdom which is really good to see. And of course, there's the underlying symbol of kind of yin and yang. So you've got the, uh, I believe that the, the tiger represents the yin, uh, the yin and the dragon, the yang. So really cool kind of symbology coming out here. Of course, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, um, the frosted finish as well. I love this frosted finish on the Perth Mint coins and you see it all the time on the, on the Perth Mint lunar coins, the one, two, and five and 10 ounce coins. Really, really attractive finish, especially when you contrast it with the shiny proof finish that you get coming out from these. And you know, even like the, the pearl right in the middle there is literally just like a dot of mercury sitting within the coin. So much so that you can see a reflection of my garden there. It's absolutely amazing. Having to do some tactical angling so that you don't get old muggins here right in the center of that coin to spoil it. But boy, oh boy, it's very, very cool indeed. Now, of course, we'll have a look at the other side. We have good old Queenie, the Ian Rank Broadley portrait of Queen Elizabeth II there. Get that in focus. It's a one dollar denominated coin. As always, you get these, uh, you know, coins from the Perth Mint. They are actually coins, whether or not you ever spend them. Of course, you wouldn't. And it's made out of four nine silver. You've got the frosted finish with the kind of proof glorious finish on Queenie there. But, you know, it's a fairly bland portrait. It's a fairly bland back that we have seen on the Perth Mint uh, pretty regularly now. 
and I've been reading on uh, some of the kind of uh, social media sites about this coin. Apparently they will be changing that portrait next year from 2019 onwards. They might be going to some kind of um, Ian Rank, sorry, not to Ian Rank, some Jodie Clark variation of the design, which would be quite interesting, really. So, uh, yeah, here we have uh, this absolutely amazing coin. Let's go through some of the specifications. So, of course, it's a $1 coin. It's one troy ounce of silver. It's got a mintage of 50,000. It comes supplied in a capsule. Uh, when I did the group order, there were rolls of 20 of them, which were in sort of sealed plastic rolls. So uh, if you were looking at getting, I guess, the best quality ones possible, those might be the best. They won't have been um, flying around in their capsules as much as others. Um, and uh, in terms of price point, so it's a very premium coin. Let's not beat about the bush here. This one, uh, certainly in the UK anyway, I think the cheapest that you can find them is around 26, 25, 26 pounds. When we did them through the group order, they were around 24 pounds, I think, net or gross, and then maybe a bit of postage for everybody else, but not very much. So, you know, pretty expensive coins when you think about it, well over uh, that, the sort of odds for silver spot prices. Um, we've seen the original ones, the Dragon and Phoenixes, do very well indeed. Now, of course, the Dragon and Phoenixes had some mint error varieties, and I've actually got a couple of those mint error varieties. Uh, and rather annoyingly, I don't actually have any of the regular uh, Dragon and Phoenix coins. I've only got the mint error varieties. So it'd be interesting for me to go back and try and pick up a Dragon and Phoenix regular coin. I haven't really done a research of all the prices, but I know, for example, that the uh, the Mint Era ones are going for 60, 65, 70 pounds, depending on where you're trying to sell them and how you're trying to sell them. Uh, so uh, I know that the regular ones are around 30, 35, maybe 40 pounds, depending on, uh, on on the sort of quality and quantity that you're looking to buy. Uh, so very, very good coins. They've held their premium. They've increased their premium over this last year. Now is a really good time to look to be able to sell those uh, first Dragon and Phoenix coins because obviously people are now discovering the series through the Dragon and Tiger. They'll be looking to pick up the first one. There's more demand fl flowing through the market, so that is definitely something to factor in. 50,000 mintage, what do I think about that? Well, it's a pretty low mintage in the grand scheme of things when you compare it to regular balloon coins, but of course there are a lot lower mintages out there for different coins. So I wouldn't say it's gonna set the world on fire. However, having said that, with the premiums that are being commanded of this coin and the Dragon and Phoenix, it's pretty impressive for a mintage of 50,000. I think that just sort of says the, you know, the, the allure of, um, of Perth Mint coins generally, the quality that they put out and the kind of quality of design as well really do set them apart from a lot of the other competition out there. So that is definitely something to factor in. You know, it's my rule of three, is it aesthetically pleasing? Yes. Does it have a low mintage? It's not the lowest, but it's pretty low. And is it desirable on the marketplace? I think so. There's a huge buzz, there's a huge uh, demand for this. There's a huge rush to get them immediately before the premiums go up, so that's only a good thing. I've also been reading that there is going to be a two ounce high relief version of this coin. I'm not sure whether they did that for the um, the Dragon and Phoenix. I would imagine they did if they're bringing out this one for the for this t uh, Dragon and Tiger. So I believe it's going to be a 1500 mintage coin, which is obviously very low. There will be probably a pretty stonkingly large premium on it though, it being a proof coin uh, in high relief. But if that's something that floats your boat, maybe one day I'll try and get hold of one to feature on my channel. So there we go. That is the Dragon and Tiger to complement the Dragon and Phoenix. I don't know how many of these that they're going to do, but I would imagine that they're going to continue making them. They are a very popular coin, very popular series, and uh, I have no doubt that the Perth Mint will want to cash in on that popularity over the coming years. So let me know your thoughts on it. Do comment down below if you've got them. Comment if you think that they are going to be a winner for the future. Uh, as always, hot or cold, what do you think is gonna happen in terms of premium? And uh, if this video has inspired you to pick them up, if you've now seen them up close and you think, yep, that's the coin for me, I'd love to know. That's one of the coolest things that I get out of doing these episodes of In Focus Friday. So there we go. Now, next week we are going to be featuring the Spade Guinea in episode 99. So make sure that if you have not done so already to hit that subscribe button. And this coin, by the way, is very, very cool, very intricate. There's lots of very um, nice little tiny, you probably can't see them zoomed out like this, but lots of tiny little rose marks in and around this shield. So it's very cool. It looks a great coin for what is a very cheap coin. Anyway, look, I'm going ahead of myself. That's all for next week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to find out more about the Spade Guinea. Hit the alarm bell if you want to get a notification when that video goes live next week. Now, I, of course, have done 97 other episodes of InFocus Friday. If you'd like to catch other episodes of that, there's a playlist down below. Make sure you go and watch those. 
As for the sneak peek of episode 100, I'm afraid I'm not going to put it on camera. Might well do that next week for you. But here is once again the giant. It's almost like a giant T Rex is coming from one side of the room. It's a big, chunky monkey. Let's put it like that. So let me know what you think this giant sound represents for episode 100. It's a very special piece indeed. Otherwise, that is all I have to say. A massive thank you for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend ahead and please make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe for more.